Welcome to our lecture online. So now let's take a look at a cylindrical capacitor. So we have two cylindrical sheets of metal. The inside one with a smaller radius r sub a has positive charge on it. The outside one with radius r sub b has a negative charge on it. And so just like with a spherical capacitor, we can come up with the equation for the voltage at any point between r a and r b. And then we can turn that into the voltage difference between voltage at A and voltage at B, which is equal to this equation right here. Now, let's see how that equation turns out as being useful compared to what we would normally use, where the capacitance is simply equal to epsilon sub naught times the cross-sectional area divided by the distance between the plates. So we're going to use these numbers here to compare the two equations to see how close they get. It turns out if, the, if RA and RB are very close together, this is a good equation, it's the best equation, gives you the most accurate answer, but it's not that different from the other one, so we'll compare the two. All right, first of all, let's calculate the capacitance. And so the capacitance, by definition, is equal to charge divided by the voltage. And the charge that we put onto a cylindrical capacitor would be the linear charge density times the length, and we divide it by the voltage, which here is the linear charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of the ratio of the two radii, so that would be r sub b divided by r sub a, like this. And now right away you see that the lambdas cancel out, and this can go to the numerator, so this can be written as 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the length divided by the natural log of r b over r a. And that would then be the equation for the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. So now let's plug in the values that we have and see what we get for the capacitance. So C would be equal to 2 pi times epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter, times the length, and let's say it's 1 meter, divided by the natural log of 10.1 divided by 10. And now we need a calculator. Let's see what we get. First, let's take the denominator, 10.1 divided by 10. Let's take the natural log of that. But take the inverse, times 2 times pi, times 8.85e to the 12 minus, and times 1, we end with 5.59 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. 5.59. All right, so that would be 5.59 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. So that would be the capacitance of that particular cylindrical capacitor. But what if we had used a simplified equation? Simply said, okay, let's just say that if we were to cut the capacitor open at one end and just fold it flat, then we have the two plates parallel to one another, realizing that the inner plate is slightly less wide than the outer plate. So there's a slight difference there, but let's see what we would get if we said that C is equal to epsilon sub naught times A divided by the distance between the plates. And so that would be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. The area would be the circumference, which is 2 pi times r, let's take a 0 0.1 meter for the inner, inner uh, radius, so 2 pi r, times the length, which would be 1 meter, and so that would also be meters, there we go, forgot the meters, and divide that by the distance between them, which uh, is, hmm, that's 1 millimeter, so that would be 0 0.001 meter. Okay, so what we would get if we use that simplified equation? So we get 8.85e to the 12 minus times 2 times pi times 0.1 divided by 0 0.001 equals, and I get 5.56. Okay, so the capacitance that would be equal to 5.56 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. So you can see that the difference between the two is very minor. Now this is the more accurate one. This is less accurate, but for a quick check to see if you did this right, you can do it like this. Again, provided that the two plates are very close together. If there's a big gap between the two, 
then the difference between these two would grow, and obviously this would be the correct answer, and that would be the approximate answer, which would be farther and farther away from the correct answer as the distance between the two plates increases. Other than that, it's a good approximation, and that is how it's done.